On the island of Mindanao in the southern Philippines, Islamic terror has been a problem since the 1970s. But now, radical Islamist factions have joined forces and aligned themselves with ISIS. In May 2017, several hundred fighters took over the city of Marawi and declared a caliphate stronghold in Southeast Asia. The Philippine army is fighting back, but the resulting battle has turned out to be much more difficult than anyone predicted. Our Frontlines team traveled to the Philippines to find out why. We traveled several hours by road from the nearest airport to get to Marawi, a city of 300,000 in the southern part of Mindanao. We passed many checkpoints the closer we got to the fighting. Our intention was to embed with the Philippine military on combat operations. The army had already lost more than 70 men, and the terrorists, known here as the Maute, were making them pay dearly for every square meter. So this is as far as we've been able to go so far into the city of Marawi. We're inside the evacuation zone. All the houses around here have been evacuated. The city of Marawi is majority Islamic. And we can hear the bombers going overhead as they're actively engaged in fighting ISIS just inside of the city of Marawi. So there's a lot more Muslims in Indonesia, right, yeah, right across exactly, the sea, yes. than there are here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Why did they choose this one small town of Marawi to try to establish a caliphate. Maute are homegrown. Uh, they are a local of Marawi city. Uh, ISIS, in a way, they were successful in rampaging uh, cities and destroying you know, Syria and Baghdad, but they weren't successful enough to set up their own government. And so they're moving towards the Far East. And uh, I think Philippines having sympathizers. In because the they already have. And also because of the social injustice that is brewing on for quite some time. It's a perfect recipe. You have an additional manpower already set up in the area. You have a narrative that you can use to get more uh, supporters, sympathizers, no? and get more members compared to Indonesia, which is purely, you know, it's Islamic state. In Malaysia, it's Islamic state. So in terms of narrative or social injustice, you, it, it's, it's missing in Indonesia. So it's a per perfect recipe to stage war here in, in Marawi City. I'm standing on a rooftop just about two kilometers from the front line down in the old city of Marawi. And it's evident from the volume of fire we're hearing down there and the number of explosions that the Philippine army is trying to end this thing sooner rather than later. There's still a couple hundred ISIS troops that are holding out to the end down there. And it's evident from what we're hearing, they are not going down without a fight. Okay. Uh, this is no joke. We're two kilometers from the front lines, and just as I finished that stand-up, we had about three rounds come in, I mean, close enough that they hit the rooftop right beside me over there. It uh, is apparent that perhaps somebody is actually uh, targeting us on this rooftop. I thought we were far enough away from the combat to keep that from happening, but uh, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe we should have worn our body armor after all. Incoming fire has a very recognizable sound. So when we heard the zip of a near miss, we both knew we'd made a mistake standing on this rooftop. One thing about doing this job, you got to know when to duck. Because of the, the terrain, the, these are buildings, houses that are like five, six, seven stories high. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of uh, windows around. So the, the snipers could be anywhere. They have a very good hiding position and they can transfer very fast. Our unit is uh, really challenged to, to, to locate this. Being located, we have counter snipers. We also request uh, regularly the uh, artillery fires and then the, we use the mortars to, to, to go after these buildings. But very hard, very hard for these buildings, reinforced buildings. Where is the sniper fire coming from mostly? Just like, like where those minarets are there? Yeah, the minarets. Uh -huh. uh, those are the uh, sniper fires. Okay. We're now just about 200 meters from the ISIS positions, right through here where the smoke is. And uh, we're on a, a balcony of a, of a house. Uh, we have to keep our heads down because the snipers in these minarets here that know that this position is here, we're watching as uh, Philippine bombers come in and drop 110 pound munitions on those positions and try to root them out without hitting the minarets, unfortunately, of the mosques where the snipers are. It's an area because those snipers 
There's no cover or concealment right there. It's just a little short place that we probably shouldn't walk across. The terrorists have emplaced thousands of improvised explosive devices throughout the city, just like we experienced in the fight for Mosul. It makes clearing these buildings a slow and dangerous job. A lot of uh, improvised explosive devices right now being rigged in the different houses. So you have to be very careful when once you secure an area to go through and clear each one very systematically, right? House by house, building by building, rooms by rooms. We have uh, our, our troops across the bridge or across the Agus River. They're doing it, that's, that's that thing slowing them. In the process of clearing this house, they found uh, two kilos of uh, the the poor man's cocaine, the methamphetamine. Oh, right? meth, yeah. Yes, That's meth. what they're using to stay yeah, hopped yeah. up, right? Yeah. Two kilos was found in this uh, in this house. We've heard that they're using the human shields as slaves to help reinforce them further. That is the report, and uh, based on our interview, because our unit is the one directly in front of the two bridges, the first and the second bridges. These are the the access of the civilians coming out. There are two types, those one that, that are being uh, negotiated to come out and those that escape. Some of these people are being used as decoys. They are really forced to cross. Mm -hmm. And in the moment we are exposed, we take shots on us. It happened a lot of time. So we have to wait for them to have a covered position for these people before we meet them. So we've just gone and picked up three people who escaped across the bridge from the ISIS positions to friendly forces over here on this side of the river. And we've brought them to a little processing center because they have to check and make sure that they're not actually bad guys uh, and figure out where they need to go and what they need to do now. And the very interesting thing about this group is that they're Catholics who were trapped and were made to work, were made to uh, help those uh, ISIS fighters. They're also giving reports of young boys being made to pick up arms and fight for ISIS. The other day, they said that women are being taken as wives of these uh, terrorist groups. The men are forced to take up arms. Even young boys, right? 16 years old, 16 years old, just the other day, just the other day. They told us that uh, we did, at first they were hesitant, but uh, two friends were killed in front of them, so they were forced. You've served in the, in southern Philippines before, you said? Yes, for 10 years. and. Uh, the, the, the tactics has changed mm -hmm. over time. Before they occupied uh, a camp or a jungle. a jungle, now they are trying to occupy big cities. Before they won't occupy the, the mosque, mm -hmm. the places of worship, now they're occupying the places of worship. Before uh, they take only a few hostages, but now it's 100, 200 hostages they're taking. Can you explain to me uh, the scope of the humanitarian crisis yeah. that this has created. Uh, yeah, uh, we are we are focusing our efforts on the relief operations uh, that we do every day. Uh, we are feeding more than 286,000 IDPs, internally displaced persons, and uh, we also do uh, re rescue efforts, uh, especially those trapped residents that are still in, within the encounter area, mm -hmm. and uh, we also do retrieval operations like uh, the dead uh, bodies that are scattered in the streets. If they're really Muslims, why are they destroying the place of Muslims? Almost 98% are Muslim in Marawi City, so why are they doing the fight in the city? That's interesting you say that because in the United States, uh, when people hear that Marawi City is almost all Muslim, they think that the Muslims support what they're doing there. No, Muslims are not supporting what they are doing. Mm. No one supports them. In fact, uh, all Muslim, our people living in this uh, Marawi City are peace-loving people. Mm. We don't support any group, like they call them multi-group, we don't support them. Marawi City. Yes. Now. Sad. Mostly of these people, they were go back with nothing. Their homes are nothing. You don't support anything that they, no. that they do. No. The Philippine army uh, is trying very hard to finish them. What are your hopes for them? We are hoping they are doing what he can do as far as finish this war. Yeah. From Syria and Iraq to Southeast Asia, ISIS terrorists are being rooted out of their strongholds around the globe. But their recruiting efforts are still very effective. The threat they pose means the United States and our allies cannot afford to relent. 
Here at NRA TV, our team will continue to go into harm's way to bring you the truth wherever it takes us. From the front lines of freedom, I'm Oliver North for NRA TV.